Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name's Peter Strong. I'm the director here at Racing Magpie. On behalf of our whole team, I want to welcome everyone to an exciting presentation today that's part of our seasonal program called Winter Camp with Focus Smith presenting his talk called Foundation of Graffiti Reservation Writer. Um, we're very privileged to have him with us this afternoon to share with all of you. Uh, I've had the honor of knowing Focus for quite a few years. Um, first met him down in Pine Ridge and have worked with him a few times here in Rapid and everywhere in between. And I know you're gonna really love what he has to say today. Uh, to give you a little background on Racing Magpie, if you don't know, Racing Magpie is a Lakota-centric arts and culture organization founded in 2015 in Rapid City, South Dakota, Minnelusaha, uh, to center the Lakota practice of being a good relative in everything that one does. Our work is focused on elevating and amplifying the ongoing work of community-based artists and culture bearers. And then as part of being a good relative, this program, Winter Camp, um, we'll reimagine the Lakota winter camp model of problem solving and community building in today's world by examining the deeper cultural roots about the way Lakota people do things and how they interact with the universe around them. Uh, while these events are open to the public, we're happy to have everyone here. They're always going to center upon uh, Lakota community members as both presenters and attendees as plants and trees focus their energy on building strength and growing from the roots during winter, our community will join to strengthen and grow together each year through sharing and learning. Um, one of my jobs is to thank the Bush Foundation for their generous sponsorship of this program. We're really um, happy to have their support. Also, uh, we've, we often get asked how our supporters can contribute to our work and our community as well. I'd suggest at least two ways in these times of virtual working and community care that you could do that. One is you can make a donation to Racing Magpie directly through our website or mailing in or dropping off a donation. The other thing is the other way to do that is to support native artists and makers and creatives directly by searching them out on social media, on the web, buy their art, download their music buy gifts for yourself or for other people, or send monetary gifts directly to the artists and support them that way. Um, for some housekeeping, if you have questions anytime during the, the live stream from Focus, feel free to either type them in the chat here on Zoom if you're joining us that way, or in uh, Facebook Live, just throw your, your um, question in or comment there and I'll pass them along to focus along the way. Uh, we'll also leave some room for questions at the end. Keep your cameras on, stay fully engaged if you'd like, but also know that we want you here and to be as comfortable as possible. Uh, without any further delay, I'm really excited to introduce uh, Focus Smith and I'll just hand it over to him and, and take it away. I'm a happy. Derek Focus Smith, Imachi Apelo. My name is uh, Derek Focus Smith, and I'm a writer here in uh, this area, this region. What I mean by writer is, is in the graffiti culture, it's known predominantly amongst the people who are practitioners that what we do is we write and we write our names. And that's essentially all that is, is we write our names over and over and over again. And that was the basis and foundation of graffiti in and of itself. And so what I'm going to do in this position with this presentation is to show the other side of it, because throughout my time here in this region over the past couple of decades, I've done numerous presentations on what graffiti is, the culture in and of itself, where it's come, where it's come from. Um, and I believe that through each and every time I've, I've paid homage to the to those who helped me through the things that, I, that I've been able to find through my inspirations and through what's carried me, um, you know, through the hard times and through the good. But for this, I want to uh, concentrate solely on just the idea of what it means to be indigenous, uh, an indigenous graffiti writer. And so again, you know, this circles back all the way around to like where I got my start. 
Um, and I start, got my start in Salt Lake City when I was visiting some family there. And I traveled there and I got immersed in the culture um, due to you know, some of the people that I was growing up around. Um, and they showed me what that culture was, you know, and it wasn't something that I had to have a buy into. It wasn't something that was necessary, but it was necessary for me because of the ideas that I had in my mind and, and I felt in my heart coming from not understanding life as a whole, as society as a whole, and what graffiti did for me and the community that it, that it brought around and the support and help that I got from that. And so I decided to um, invest myself into that culture and it was something that carried me, you know, again, as I stated before, a lot through what, through what I was going through. Um, and that was finding myself through, you know, my own identity. Um, and during that time, you know, the appeal wasn't something that was um, embraced by the majority of society because graffiti at its basis is, is literally uh, is seen, you know, as a crime. It's seen as, as something that isn't uh, productive or helpful for any community or any society. Um, and it's seen as something that is not um, applicable to, the, to a larger regard of, of society and what they relate to as art. Um, but I should say that now uh, graffiti and how it's translated into muralism is now the largest art movement in history right now um, and it's going to continue to be so because of just how tremendous it is and just how impactful it is on, on communities not only this one but you know the world over uh, because it's definitely changing the face of what each community has and it definitely is changing the face of, of the idea of art um, and the idea of how communities and people interact with that art and what it does for uh, the youth in those communities. And so I always held that with me uh, growing up, uh, what that did for me, <clears throat> excuse me. And knowing that that helped me in the places where I felt like it was the darkest, it led me to building and growing different ideas to where I could formulate ways to help when I saw the need to. Um, and again, there was no buy-in. There was no, um, you get the spotlight uh, for painting, you know, 100 buildings. You know, you, you get a spotlight, but it's not what you want. You know, it's, it's definitely, you know, if they catch you, you're going to do some time or you're going to pay for it in some way. Um, and it was all done under, under the guise of, you know, we, we had to get our paint by means of, of you know, procuring it, you know, with the five-finger discount, you know, so it wasn't, something that ever gave back in terms of what you see other artists uh, striving for. Um, it was always done just because the individuals had wanted to do it. And it was definitely a chosen society because you had to have the want to do that. Um, and I don't say this to claim in terms of, of egoism or claim in terms of, of having to uh, be better than or above or other than. I'm just saying simply and wholly that graffiti is its own culture and the lack of understanding uh, that's out there through society as a whole as far as what it takes to make and create a writer instead of an artist. Um, and the difference between those is that, you know, most writers don't consider themselves artists. Um, simply because of those means, because there's a different type of, of lifestyle that it requires. Um, and so that, again, was something that helped, you know, propel me forward and just the freedom of it, you know, of, of being able to go and, and paint, you know, and albeit wherever it may be, have been, you know, in, on freeways or in the buildings and, you know, alleys, things like that. Um, sometimes the situations became very risky, you know, they became very dangerous. Um, and most of the times it was done, you know, either, either by myself or, or with a few other people, but it was very, very few and very minimal. And those are things that added to, again, the, the strength, you know, the heart that it took to be able to become a writer and to put yourself in those situations time and time again, you know, where 
Um, the situations became life or death many times. Um, and that became something that I had to think about, you know, time and time again, as far as, you know, is it worth it? You know, do I want to keep doing this? Because it wasn't something, again, that I had the full support of everybody. You know, I had people being upset at me when they found out that I did it. You know, even um, my own family you know, would, would say, you know, I don't know where you're going, but I hope you get caught, you know, stuff like that. And it would be different because it wasn't always a place where I would be supported and helped, you know, and I always had to find a way to get my own materials. And it was because of the pain that I was going through um, and the situation that I had to have to try to resolve uh, what it was and how to get there for myself that helped keep pushing me in that manner. And so when I say that in terms of, of it wasn't something that was celebrated or embraced, it was definitely something that created its own its own energy and what kept the appeal in my mind was that you know i grew up with the idea of of always questioning and wondering wondering what it means to be indigenous you know what it means to be um, a lakota person you know or indigenous in any matter of fact because then you know i'm half lakota i'm half Hunk papa and i'm half dene navajo and so i studied that and i took that to the ideas of, of where um, history got involved of the, you know, the stories that were being told and, and how my people told those stories and the, the parallels, you know, were not missed, you know, the whole time throughout the, the life, the lifetimes through the generations, you know, our people continuously told stories, you know, through uh, our clothing, you know, through the teepees, through the things that, that were around us. And it became the idea that, you know, it wasn't an artist in a sense that someone set out to be an artist, to be like, yeah, you know, this is what I do, so this is what I am. Um, and in terms of being called an artist, to me, it came down to the idea that um, our people, my people, you know, created and did that just because it was who they are. You know, and it came out through expression. And so it wasn't, again, an art form, it was just who they were. And that came out again on the teepees, you know, and through the win accounts. And, and you know, just like this program here um, through Racing Magpie. And I'm, I'm going to add this further, uh, a little personal disclaimer for myself that, you know, the stuff that I've been through on the part of, of my chosen career um, and the things that I've, I've lived through and my own, my opinions therein from that are strictly my own. And I ask that nobody um, throw any backlash upon, you know, this, this wonderful organization for, for choosing to support me in this manner and giving me a little bit of spotlight because they're, you know, a, a great organization and good people with good hearts and, and that needs to be acknowledged. And so with that being said, you know, I ask that, you know, that that be respected and honored because again, it's not, uh, a thing of people unifying in terms of trying to make one right or the other wrong or who's right or who's wrong. Um, it's just a matter of simply telling a story. And so moving forward with this, you know, it's, it let me know that um, we as indigenous people were just creative and outspoken in our own right. And that's how we told our stories and shared our stories was through the adornment of, of symbols and objects, you know, again, on our clothing, down to everything we did, you know, um, through the, the things that we, you know, acquired through dreams and that we were able to, to discern by being in touch with, with the realities that were there during those current times. And those again told the stories, bless you. And those again told the stories of, of how, you know, life meant what it meant for us. And so the parallels of, of doing graffiti in the modern times and the parallels of doing, you know, storytelling back then because it had a different connotation, um, showed that there wasn't a difference, you know, and that it was definitely something that wasn't strictly individualized to indigenous cultures because it's something that that goes all the way back to other cultures as well, of uh, storytelling and doing it on on cave walls and so on and so forth. It's just a natural part of, of human expression is just being able to tell your story and to tell people basically, hey, you know, I was here. And that's essentially all that graffiti is. And, you know, growing up in the era that I grew up in um, and having to survive a lot of perilous times and a lot of dangerous times, um, it 
helped to, to strengthen my resolve to be able to continue to tell a story about what it means to be indigenous. And so this goes hand in hand with, with the graffiti culture because of the, the reality of what it is. It's going up and painting on, on walls, you know, whether yours or whether or not they're yours, you know, they're in the community, they're there. And you're going up there and you're telling your story on that wall, you know, you paint your name and then you, you're finding a way into that place. You know, you're finding a way out of that place. You know, you're encountering obstacles that people don't encounter naturally every day to day with the nine to five, you know, um, get a job, buy a house, get a coffin, you know, lifestyle. It's, it's not like that. It's something that's kind of extracurricular in a super, in a very huge way. It's like, almost being a superhero, you know, you go out and you fly around at night and then you paint your name and the next day you watch what happens, you know, you see the, the stir that it creates, the buzz that it creates, and it makes kind of this energy that people don't know what to make of it, you know, they don't know how you got up there, they don't know how, you know, you, you were able to get there with all your materials and, and come away with it, because again, you know, there were some very perilous times you know, uh, being in situations where, you know, there's the danger was very real, you know, and whether or not you made a home that, that night or made it back to wherever you were sleeping at, and whether or not you had a home, you know, those kinds of things were, were where they were at. And, you know, having to risk your life for that time and time again, again, not being paid, again, not, not doing it for the sake of, of, you know, being loved by everyone because it definitely didn't create that in, in everybody. It was a very select community. It was a very select individualized grouping of people that were able to understand that, that mentality. And, um, you know, so that's just a little bit about like what graffiti is and how it ties into indigenous culture. And I'm going to share a little bit about some photos and images about where I started from. And so when I went to Salt Lake City, you know, I learned how to do everything that I needed to do, you know, to live within that culture and to respect the, the game as it is um, and to respect the culture in and of itself. You know, I learned my roots. I learned how to do what I needed to do. Um, and I learned from the people who were around me and what they showed me. And I carried that back here to South Dakota. And I realized that, you know, there's a story that needs to be told. And going back to the idea that it's going out and painting your name out there that I, you know, I realized that there was a power in that that there was a power to capture people's attention in a way that was outside of the realms of, of what this society would have you do in terms of you know, uh, the capitalistic ideas that you need to pay to play. And you need to be able to be there in a way where your presence is acknowledged by how they deem it should be. And graffiti is, is everything on the outside of that. And growing up in indigenous community and realizing the truth of that, um, it showed me that, you know, the reality of that for us was that we were never allowed to um, be who we are as indigenous people, as Lakota people. You know, we were through the history of it, we were try we were erased to a certain extent. We were not allowed to exist. And, you know, so it just fit perfectly for me to be an indigenous Lakota graffiti writer going up. And I considered that back in the day when I'd go up and hit a tag or go up and, and you know, catch a piece, I considered that counting coup. I considered that going to war with this society as is because everything in society as it is now is not our way of life. All the way down to the threads in your socks, it's not. It's definitely something other than, it's, it's the something else. That is the something else. Um, and so to me, that's, that's what it meant. It was going there and saying, hey, you know, this is where I am and, and taking that back, you know, taking that back in a real way, because that's what mattered to me was telling that story, was telling that that real story and sharing the truth as it is. And, you know, I found that within that society and within that idea that that was the best way I could do it again, because there's a lot of parallels in that world about uh, paying to play and, and the society as it is. You know, if you have money, you can make advertisements, right? And you can put those up all over and that's considered legal, but that's the same thing as graffiti. It's just different connotations. It's just different ideas. Um, and so I use that same power. I use that same idealism um, that would be shown to me that, you know, 
you know, how, how come I have to see ads of all this stuff out here and see it dominated by a certain, you know, demographic um, out here that only allows them to have the spotlight and have their story told as it's, you know, and why, why do I have to see it every day, you know? And so I faced that a lot growing up around this region of people's uh, misunderstanding. Um, and so I decided to use the ability and the power that was shown to me in ways that became more form, more connected to the community, because I realized that there was a lot more going on around here and being able to tell the indigenous story, basically indigenous people um, were considered graffiti themselves, you know, human graffiti, right? Uh, because again, we weren't allowed to exist, you know, they banned our, our practice of our own religious or, or our own traditional cultures to, until the late seventies. You know, and so like those those thoughts stuck with me and they were really, they were wrong. And for that to continue and that to be the way that we should be forced to live was something that I, that did not sit right with me. And so, you know, I began to go out and, and, and I heard the stories of all the people I was around and I felt their pain because, you know, I grew up just like that too. You know, I grew up down there on the res and, and, um, with, with, a, with a very loving family that helped me and supported me and loved me, you know, but I realized that that wasn't mostly the cause for everybody as it was uh, dealing with trauma and dealing with the pain and how people took that out on other people. And so I started to realize again that there was a calling that I could help gain whatever attention and spotlight I could instead of writing my name, I started writing in essence the community's name and showing and sharing that, you know, there is other pain here and that people do have a need. And so I use that. And so this first mural here, and I, I have I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of murals of photographs and stuff. So I can't get through them all today. Trust me, we'd be here for a couple hours if, if that was the case. Um, you know, I started this way back in, in the early 2000s, you know, 20, 20 so years ago. And that's when I first ran across Peter. Uh, and racing magpie when he came down and I had this little folder full of stuff all these pictures you know all these little old school snapshots and and you know I walked up to him and, and and he was doing a presentation in the building that was close to this mural and this first mural was was I put it up for my sister who at the time you know had gone through a very excruciating experience um, somebody had had hurt her very very badly and for the for the fact that it might trigger somebody or be hurtful, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, and so, it helped me to see that, you know, I had the ability to do something about it apart from uh, going out and, and reacting in the same way that I saw other people continue to react. You know, I had the ability to be, a, a present, to be present in the community in, in a way that didn't allow people to negate me just by, oh, he's, he's, he's an angry Indian, or, you know, he did something just because, you know, somebody made him react, you know, in it. And what I ended up doing was creating this mural to help her, you know, to show her that, hey, you know, we care for you, we're here for you, you know, and, you know, that whoever did that to you, you know, they're, they're you know, they're going to be gone now, but this will always be here for you, you know, and this, the word above that is the word persist, you know, so it carried on like that, um, and the idea that she would see it every day, and that she would be, a, that would, it would be a part of her environment every day, um, and so that carried me forward to see that there was more to it than writing my own name, that there was more to it than just the clout and just the, the idea of what graffiti culture had in store. And it doesn't seem to go very far in graffiti culture of, of you do it for the clout, you do it for the, the, the recognition amongst just that small community, because outside that community, people don't really want to understand. You know? And it's the same way here, and it's the same way in, in in any society, you know, as, as a whole, you know, um, and especially being an indigenous graffiti writer is extremely tough. You know, if, if you are not an indigenous graffiti writer, you know, you have, you get a lot more passes to say that, to say the least, 
You know, if you're indigenous, you're walking around with a backpack, you know, eight, nine, 10 at night, as soon as the sun goes down, chances are, you know, there's a lot higher chance that things are gonna go bad for you. You know, you're not gonna be, you're more likely to be stopped by cops just for walking around being indigenous. No, you know, those are facts. So it's a lot harder to get by doing what you need to do, um, you know, and to do the love of your craft, you know, being, you know, any being uh, indigenous or, or another, you know, uh, to be indigenous of any form, I'll say it that way. So moving forward, you know, these, these are some of the artworks that the works that I did down in Pine Ridge. Um, I'm gonna go back to this one. This one's still up, you know, this one right here is still up. And I, I should say this in a note that there is little to no graffiti done on this or you know, and that that's a statement in and of itself. Um, the stuff that I had done, you know, is, is respected and it stays there. And it stays there in a way that is impactful to community in, in a very big way, because it makes it so that um, it becomes a part of, of society in, in a developmental sense, you know, the epigenetics of it. You know, there have been generations that have been raised around the stuff that I have done. And so that carries me forward in knowing that that's what's there, that that's what's going on. And that's what helps people to be able to see uh, what's possible for them, you know, because again, the lifestyle that, that I've lived and the lifestyle that this, that this has brought me through has definitely made it one that has brought me to realizations to challenge what I believe in, to think about what it is that I can do more, you know, to think about what it is that I can do to help myself in terms of, of where I can grow past the stereotypical insights of people and to be able to dismantle what's going on in terms of stereotypes in society as a whole, you know, because growing up as a graffiti writer, the idea of connotation is, is that of criminal and that's what the majority of people want you to believe. And I should share with you as I'm sitting here now that, uh, yeah, that's been a part of my past, you know. Yes, I've, I, I got, I don't have a higher education degree, you know, I didn't go to, to college to do this, I, you know, and I don't not condone it. If you if that's your path, that's your path. But I only have my GED and I got that from my alma mater, uh, South Dakota State Penitentiary. And going up through here in uh, Rapid City in this high, highly visible and highly energetically uh, harmful place that, you know, if you're not of the might, then you're not what's right, you know? And so like, that is a way to say that there's there's a huge oppression here and it's not a secret. Um, and to so to speak on it is not something that is wrong. And that's what uh, people have tried to do to me by bringing up and saying that uh, if you speak about it, then you're just trying to cause trouble. No, that's not true. You know, there's been a lot of harmful things and very malicious and, and just dirty things that have been done here in terms of, of what's happened to indigenous people. And so again, I use that first initial reality of what, what, what happened to my sister and realize that that same thing happens to our people time and time again. And so I'm gonna use the very walls that they put up around us, you know, uh, to tell the story of indigenous people. And I'm gonna do it in such a way that help people to understand that that is a reality for them, that they have the ability to do that, you know, and as it is so here in this in this state, you know, I've been uh, forced through a lot of really hard times. Uh, one of those times was, uh, you know, uh, going through a situation of, of having a trial experience where I faced life here, you know, and I had my innocence proven after 521 days and I went to trial for that, you know, and, and that is very real because that's a part of who I am. You know, that's a part of who I am is challenging the system, challenging what is, challenging how it's, how it's supposed to be by the people who, are, who believe that they have the right to dominate perception in reality. And that's not something that I believe is, is there for them to continue to, to have as far as you know, creating narratives that people should abide by or, or be, be obedient to or acquiesce to. Um, because as, a, as what I'm learning now is the definition of an artist is that it's a responsibility to be able to change that narrative, to, to question that, and to bring other people into the reality of that, to show them that, hey, that's not the way it is. 
you know, and especially now, you know, this in this day and in this society, we have the interconnectivity of the internet, you know, and and everything that's here now, the Zoom and the internet, uh, the Instagram, sorry, and the Facebooks and stuff like that. Those were always things that, you know, um, weren't always a reality in, in my life. No, I, I still remember, uh, you know, having the little dial phones and that was it. You know, I still remember, you know, finding out about internet when it came out. I still remember that, you know, and that wasn't, so I don't have that reality of just growing up in this fast world. You know, I have the reality of, of what it was, you know, and so I realized that that's, you know, how, how, <laughs> What, what can be done with, with the society around us. And, you know, I want you to notice that looking through these pictures is, is predominantly just style writing, you know, it's just the idea of, of writing, you know, again, words on the wall. And so it went from writing my name to writing words on the wall. And it went from writing words on the wall to painting pictures of, of what was and what was there to, to celebrate what, what is. Because the majority of, of our lifetime as indigenous people, it was uh, not only attempted to be erased and taken from us, but it was attempted to change that narrative to where we don't exist. And so these works that I would continue to put out there, again, I should tell you that when you work outside the system and all the systems that are, um, they become very upset at that. They become very agitated with uh, anyone trying to counter their their corrupt narratives, you know, and so like I, I did these murals uh, openly and freely and I brought up, you know, stuff about the Indian boarding school and I worked with them and the Indian boarding schools here in Rapid, you know, and so like there's a lot of people who, who grew very upset at me for continuously uh, not being afraid to talk about what is. And so that developed slowly and more slowly into the continuation of oppressive forces that would come against me to the point of, you know, there being um, people that would show up to try to bully and harass me and my family, you know, that turned into stalking, that turned into things like that, um, just for painting on murals, you know, just for painting on walls. And this society here in, in this place, you know, it's, it's very, it grew up, it, it held a lot of negative energy in the terms of, you know, there used to be no Indian and Indians allowed signs hanging in every business here uh, until the late 60s, 70s, you know, and I paint murals on those same buildings here in town, you know, and it's here to say that, you know, as indigenous people, this was originally, you know, a part of our, our, our migratory path, you know, it was a part of where we grew up at and, and the, the importance of here is something that's very crucial to us, you know, and I've painted in just about every single building here in Rapid City. You know, here's one inside the Civic Center, uh, excuse me, that was done a while ago. You know, and this was a part of another one of my movements that I started while, while working on this 20 plus year movement that I call the Tazaki. Um, and that name is, is the wave. And, you know, if you're familiar with, with history, if you're familiar with art history and, and Mexican muralism, you know, that was a definitely a great influence in my life um, because I wondered how other indigenous people did it. You know, how did they do something that empowered their people? And what can I learn from that? What can I glean from that to be able to take back to the people who are not a part of this in the way that uh, it can help them, you know? And so I say that in terms of uh, bringing up um, being in, in the penitentiary, you know, facing life here. Um, having to be homeless here more than a few times, you know, uh, there's a different part of society that, that comes with those experiences. And I know that, that a lot of people that are on this Zoom call and that, you know, are here um, have contact with that, but the majority of society doesn't, you know, the majority of society is not in contact with that. And so I feel it a, a, a passion within myself to know that you know, I can go forward into these realms of, of higher learning, higher education, um, and I've crossed all these boundaries of what people had in terms of tables, right? You know, uh, who's going to let you sit at the table, who accepts you, uh, societal, societal acceptance, things like that. Um, I crossed all those boundaries through doing all this work, again, with no higher education, no formal training, no, no college, no nothing like that. I did it all on my own to a, to a specific degree. 
Um, of course, working through, through and by the love of all the wonderful people here in, in the society that helped support me and that, you know, did take a chance on me and that did, you know, see the promise of something new and something better. Because let me tell you, if you're working in that manner of speaking about things that are going to make people uncomfortable, chances are you're going to have to find a way to do it yourself. And so, you know, I, I you know, I'm going to tell you that. Um, I'm very thankful to everybody who's ever helped me at any point in time that has ever given me a chance and said, hey, you know, we want to showcase your work. We want to take that chance because it's risky for them. Because of the way this society is, is structured is that there's a lot of things that work just in the idea of, of you know, if you say something, uh, your job could be taken away. You know, they're going to come after you in some ways. They're going to try to shut you down. And that's a very real reality for a lot of people. And it's one that I've seen countless times, you know, and the whole point of me painting on the walls and using the same uh, walls that were, you know, put up around us to continue to tell the story um, and to share the stories of other people, you know, of how oppression was put, you know, on them and how they made it through and how, you know, it, it made them into uh, very capable, very enduring, very compassionate, very helpful people. Um, you know, that, that that resonated with me. And I continued to carry that forward. And that led me to so many places. You know, this is this is right here at, at the George Floyd Memorial Square. Right there, I painted that star quilt. Right there. You know what I mean? I was in league with, with so many powerful people. In terms of power, I mean this power. Not the power of, the, of out there in the society. I mean this power where you care for people and it's there for them. And they see it, and it's a matter of bringing that awareness to society in a way that um, is helping others to develop and grow their own potential to realize that they have more than what those, you know, capitalistic games have for them in store. You know, and so it, it brought me to the ideas of, of that that's not the only way to do it. And growing up in those hard ways, I realized that self-destruction is not the only way. You know, it's not the only way. And when I say that, the majority of these people um, that's out there, you know, they're not on the Zoom call. They're not here. You know, they're out there struggling. You know, they're out there living their life right now. And so this is to help to share my story in a big way, too. But I'm not here to grandstand. I'm not here to say, oh, I'm good because I did this or, oh, oh you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a famous person because, you know, I made it happen. I'm here to tell you how it happened for me. So just in case you know somebody who is going through a hard time, maybe you can help them in that way. You know, it's not about me and it's not about what I do in terms of making me a better person in the eyes of society as a whole, you know, because at any moment, anybody would take a part from my past and try to hang me by it, say, oh, that's just who he is. No, it's not. You know, everybody has the ability to change. Everybody has the ability to learn and grow and to be something different and to share that with the person next to him. And so from this point, what I'm sharing with you is that, you know, I, I, I did that in a way where I realized that, you know, the, mo the majority of the people who are playing the game in the capitalistic society's eyes of, you know, art gallery and this and that, you know, there's, there's a buy-in for that. And there's a way that you have to act to be in that way. There's a way that you have to be to participate in that world. And, you know, I learned how to do that. And, I, and what I learned from that, I turned around and I started helping people out. You know, I started putting my hand back and saying, you know, come with, you can do this too. And from that, I've, you know, I've watched people's businesses grow. I've watched people start things from their own, from their, you know, grassroots up, just because they now had somebody to interact with who had the knowledge and who had been there um, in their shoes, literally, you know, to walk with them in that way. And then now they see that it's possible for them because there's a lot of people that I know that wouldn't believe in themselves because there isn't the idea of relatability, right? Because in politics, it's not the most compassionate and right argument that wins, it's the most relatable. And that's something that is true no matter where you go. You know, Nobody's gonna follow somebody who they can't relate to, but if they, if they can relate to you, then they're more likely to believe you and follow you and, and follow that inside themselves once you're able to show that to them. And I say that to tell that you know, a lot of these things that I do, you know, I've started my own, I've done a lot of different 
art groups, a lot, a lot of different art shows, a lot of different things. You know, while in the midst of, of political turmoil, while in the midst of, of, of social upheaval here, here, here in society, here in this society, I've worked with a lot of tremendous people. You know, this is Flores, you know, from up in Standing Rock and, and put her up on a mural. Same thing I've done with uh, the last mural we did here in town is uh, has Natalie Means and it has Miss Marcella LeBeau, you know, and it's a very powerful mural. And it all speaks about the Lakota culture and how, you know, prominent and, and regal, you know, and how, uh, you know, just powerful the culture is through the idea of the matriarchy and, and what that can do to offer people in terms of healing and growth, you know, and I share the stories through that. And then I share those things. And, and, and that's the reality of it for our people is that that's what we have to offer. And it's about trying to get the community as a whole together through those ways of not trying to aggrandize oneself to the point of, you know, being the one and only person that can do it. It's not true. It's not entirely true. You know, there's a handful of people here in, in this space uh, in Rapid City area region that has that does that do the same things I do uh, in terms of writing and doing graffiti. But then narrow that down to there's, you know, two people who are involved in the ceremony and culture and actually practice that. And then there's me who practices it, goes out and speaks about it. And not only does that, but stands up for it. You can be everything that you tell other people that you are, but the only reality of it is, is whenever you stand up for yourself and you face those insurmountable odds of how it, it, what it means to survive when they come after you, that's when you know that that's what's within you. And that's when you know that you have become something other than and that your life is not just for you and that I have done that in, in a plethora I have faced those odds and I've done those things and and that's something that I can't lie about that's something that's there for me as a whole and this is all this is all extremely relatable to graffiti because again the original idea of doing graffiti is going up and just writing your name on the wall and so what's my name my name is me right that's who I am. And so everything that you're seeing here, everything that I'm sharing is me. So this is a part of who I am. And so this, uh, these are just different images of, of places that I painted, you know, the I Am Legacy place, the Rapid Skills place. You know, I have a lot of work here in town. And this was that mural that I was talking about. And I called this the Historic Mothers, you know, mural, because it, it is, you know, it's something that wasn't celebrated uh, openly. It wasn't embraced by any city city media. It wasn't uh broadcast in any way in any sense they tried to launch a counter campaign to support something that they had done to boost you know their the the area name itself instead of paying you know homage and, and do actually being respectable you know in an honest way you know to the lakota culture um you know and again watching how this has unfolded for me to have the ability to continue to tell my story and to tell the story of our people as a whole has taken me to places that I had not even dreamed about. I could not even fathom, you know, back in the day. And here is a picture of, of myself in France, you know. This is something that, again, that I had not, not even a clue about what it would take to go there and what it would take to be able to share my story. But again, I find myself in the reality of, of you know, that if you continue to believe that what you're doing is, is, the, is the best thing for yourself, you know, basically essentially boiled down, if you believe in yourself and you have that kind heart to help others and be able to do that in such a way, you know, that'll be, that'll be returned to you. you know, that'll continue to bless you up and that's no joke. You know, so those are things that, that I found for myself in the reality of, of what it takes to, to be there because I've used every single opportunity that I've ever gotten to help uplift others. I've, I've you know, created again, art shows, I've created jobs, I've brought other people onto murals, so many people, I've taught so many classes throughout the years that I now have uh, grade school students that have gone on to college and they still contact with me. You know, they still say, hey man, I remember when you, when you told me this, I remember, uh, you know, and it's those things that like, that give me the, the breath to keep going, you know, 
because it was something that I had thought about when I was just starting. And, you know, especially when my son came into my life, you know, uh, and Adonis, you know, I love you, son. And he would help me paint, you know, he would help me paint. And a lot of times it would be just me and him, you know, a lot of the times it would be just me and him painting. And, you know, the amount of sacrifice that I gave to, to put into this uh, is something that if I had known ahead of time, I probably would have talked myself out of it. But given the fact that I felt like I was being driven and pulled um, in so many different directions, you know, it kept giving me the, the fire to keep trying. You know, you know, there's a lot of times when I was sleeping in my car outside of my murals, you know, just roughing it, you know, no money, no nothing, just because I wanted to paint, just because I felt like I had to. Um, it's what I did. You know, and the amount of times that there's been a lot of things that have been used that were, you know, again, this this game creates people that that hurt people. You know, it's it's a game for sure. You know, it's a game that people are, you know, not the game of graffiti, but the game of, of the capitalism world. You know, um, they you know they take your ideas. You know, they they don't pay you the respects that they should. You know, they, they leave you out, you know, just because of something that they believe is, is, is that you did wrong when it wasn't even that at all. And so it's, it's been a long road, you know, it's been a lot of twists and turns, but for one thing for damn sure is that it's made me extremely resilient, made me extremely compassionate, you know, as I could feel, you know, and I understand exactly what it means to be in that place where you never understood, you never had that space and you never get that chance, you know, because the people in power like to keep it that way. You know, they like to keep it in terms of, of the reality that if you don't have that buy-in, you don't pay to play, you know, you don't get no say. It's, it's, it's like you're invisible, you know, and again, in, in the indigenous culture, you know, we were made to be invisible, you know, and I started doing this uh, on the reservation, you know, which essentially is, you know, what essentially are concentration camps. You know, and that's exactly what they were. That's exactly what they are, you know, and that's something that was shared to me through, you know, the knowledge that was given to me through my family. You know? And so it's, it's bringing the truth and the realities of those things to light in such a way that it gives people a new perspective because there's not a lot of time where people have to spend in investing in who, who they are, you know, because it's about, you know, trying to make it for the next month, you know trying to get enough money to, 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 to get what you need. Um, and so to have had the privilege to be able to trans, you know, transition a little bit from doing the murals and going out and going to France, New York, Chicago, you know, and doing it you know, all, all on my own to a really real extent you know, has, been, has given me a huge blessing to realize that there's more out there to, to broaden my mind my scopes, you know, to realize that there was more ways of thinking, more ways of doing stuff, because if you're only seeing a certain picture, you know, that's all you know, you know, and so if there's anybody who's, who's out there struggling and trying to find a way, or you're thinking, oh man, I shouldn't try this, you know, I shouldn't even do this because somebody else is doing it, no, just realize that that's a variant of what they're doing, you know, uh, the only things that are given to you that you see are the things that you see, and there's nobody out there that has the power, the control, or the way of the will to stop you from doing whatever you want to do, you know, just don't be hurting people, you know, go out there. And if you have a dream to continue to follow what you want to do, you know, don't let anybody talk you out of it. Because there was a lot of times that that came up, you know, because I realized that if people are shown a problem, but they're not shown how to deal with it or to control it, they get used to it. And they force themselves to get used to it. And so a lot of what I do through my muralism too, and my education through my classes is I, is I show people how to deal with it because a lot of the things that I encounter are people who are considered you know, at risk, you know, at risk youth or people who are on their way, way back, you know, re-entering society through, through parole or you know, whatever, what have you. Um, and because I have gained the knowledge that I have through you know, all my self-discovery, I turn around and do my absolute best to give it back to them, you know, and, and a lot of the times it's not easy and it shouldn't be because it's healing and it's not going to be easy. It's 
going to be hard and it's going to be tough and it's going to get ugly and it's not going to be fun. You know, and just the fact that there's a pretty picture on the wall, you know, a pretty picture in the gallery, you know, it changes that. But at the same time, you know, it, it makes a bigger impact because it allows people to see that, you know, the story with it is a story that can be, you know, attributed to their to their life and whatever they take from it is whatever they take from it. You know, and so that's been something that's helped me to realize, you know, what I can do and, and how I can do it and what I can continue to offer. Yeah. You know, before I, before I started this, you know, I, I was looking at all the pictures that I have and I was trying to find the right ones to be able to tell all the stories that I have. But throughout this entire section selection that you've seen here, you know, there's been many stories from painting on the reservation, uh, painting schools down there, growing up in Madison and doing that, um, to painting in, in different uh, mural jams, festivals, different things like that, that had that brought me to those specific places. Um, and realizing the full extent of, of what it takes to paint a mural is, is such a huge task. It's, it's monumental because you're talking about you know, big, big, big walls, you know, climbing up and down ladders all day long, you know, and then going through the weather, going through the variants that happen. It could be humid, it could be hot, and you're dripping sweat all day. You're dealing with exhaustion, you're dealing with, uh, you know, coldness, you're dealing with trying to keep yourself warm if it's cold outside. You know, you're trying to deal with, with all kinds of different variant factors, and that was the same way it was whenever I was uh, painting graffiti out there before I got into all this, you know, before the spotlight got put on me, you know, it's the same way. You have to deal with all these factors. And so those things, you know, in essence, helped me to build and help me to grow and have a different outlook on, on what life is and, and just how much I could continue to contribute to myself in, in preparation and knowledge and ability and realizing that that was something that I had control of. You know, that that was something that is given to me to be able to determine exactly who I need to be um, regarding these, these said situations. And again, those are things that a lot of people who grow up, you know, aren't visibly shown or don't have a demonstration in front of them because of the nature of society as a whole, right? You know, and when I talk about that society in the capitalistic world, it makes everybody into a uh, dog eat dog. You know, you know, it makes a lot of people into that rising above one another, you know, the clout based society where, you know, if you don't have this, you know, but if you don't do that, you know, but and the reality of it is, is, is your self worth is not determined by what you have or don't have your self worth is determined by what you believe in yourself to be and what you do for yourself as far as healing and growing and nurturing that spirit within yourself to know that your life is independent, independent of what other people think about you because it's your own life. That breath that you're breathing right now, that's your own. And when you came into this world and you took that first breath that creator gave you, that was your declaration from that point on that your sovereignty relies solely upon you. Nothing changes that. There isn't a person in this world that can take away from that ever, ever. And it's on you to keep building that for yourself. And it's on you to keep developing that for yourself. And it's on you to believe in yourself enough that what you think, what it comes into here or comes into here is sacred enough, you know, and powerful enough to be able to sh be shared with everybody out there. You don't gotta be like everybody else. You just got to have the strength to be yourself. You know, and that's something that, that was fine tuned for me through all the things that, that you know, I ended up facing, you know, the adversity, you know, all, all the, the tribulations and the trials, you know. How much time we got left? You're doing good. I do have a couple questions for you if you're ready to, to take a couple. Yeah. All right, we got a question here in Zoom um, from T. Smith. Uh, T. S. says, mental health and wellness is ubiquitous now more than ever. Do your murals address this in any way or have they been therapeutic in regards to mental health and wellness? It's a good question. Yes, um, 
the the very fact that I can do these murals is is very cathartic for me. It's a it's a cathartic release. You know, it it basically helps me to work through the emotions that come up in my life. It helps me to be able to deal with things that I'm processing at the moment. It gives me the opportunity to, to again find myself in a place where I find it meditative. And working with all the different colors, working with all the, um, the people involved helps me to be able to find a new way to relate to people, uh, relate to situations, relate to opportunities. Um, but as far as the, you know, and that's always a continuation of mental health, but it's definitely helped me to be able to process a lot, you know, and because it was something that was always there for me before the murals when I was, you know, inside those boxes, inside, you know, logged away, you know, for years um, that I always took to. It was what I did. I drew, I drew, and I drew, and I drew, you know, and on the inside, on the other side of those walls, you know, over in SDSP, um, there's an amazing amount of artists there, amazing amount of creatives that people don't even know about, man. And their, their stuff is just, whoa, you know, and then you got people out here that are in the game and it's like, hey, man, all right. And then, you know, it, it's helped me to understand that, like, you know, there's, there's a lot more out there that can be seen and shown. And it's, it's helped them and to know that that's been something that's helps people. It's given me the chance to share that with other people and be like, well, you know, this is what helped me, you know, and then it helps to gear their mind towards, towards what, you know, what they can do to help themselves. Thanks focus. Um, on Facebook, you're getting some, some uh, affirmations. You got some, someone said, well said, to your to the things you were saying there at the end, you've got um, some love from Mary Begay said I'm who said I'm proud of you for doing the mural the beautiful murals, and uh, she looked on Facebook and can't find you doing the amazing murals so she'll keep looking for that. Um, just wanted to share that love, and I've got a question. Um, you've talked about um, how you've been real self right, you've done a lot of the work yourself and you've made it to where you are because of your hard work and you try and give back and be um, um, supportive and, and uh, uplifting to, to the community too, right? Who, so I'm curious, who, who would you name as your top couple like influential people? Who's been influential on you and who's had impact on you and your, in your um, writing career? When I first started, you know, I looked at a lot of the pioneers um, and graffiti wasn't originally a uh, culture that, that belonged to just one race, you know, it was extremely multicultural. It was something that was shared by everybody and that's what I found the most appealing. Um, you know, and for me, it was a lot of the West Coast influence with a mix of the East Coast. And so some of the ones that I, that I vibed with were Cess. Um, from New York and Saber from AWR MSK. Uh, you know, I ought to give a shout out to some of the people who was here, you know, that when I came up from the res, you know, painting on painting all over the res with you know some of the grandmas getting mad at me, you know, asking why I was painting on everything, you know. <clears throat> so coming up here, you know, there was a lot of people that that I saw that were already had things popping, you know, and, and shout out to Coda uh, and Rest, you know, and those those are some some solid writers right there. Uh, you know, and there's been a couple of other people that were here, but the main, the main focus for me was always, you know, my people, you know, indigenous people, because I, I knew the struggle, what it took to, to have to go through that day to day and just being indigenous was a struggle in and of itself. So I always looked at them first. Thanks. We've got another question here on Zoom. Bo just asked, have you thought about creating a school or an area or a platform to teach others about your craft, about writing, to help others express themselves or anything like that along those lines? Absolutely. That's a great question. And thank you for asking that. Um, yeah, that's, that's been the next ambition is that in and of itself. I still go to local area schools and I still interact with uh, local art classes. And, you know, it's that's a, that's another thing that, that blows my mind is that 
you know, years ago when I was painting on the res and it felt like it was just me. Um, Till now, you know, I go into a school and or I go into places and people are like, hey, man, you're that guy from TV. And I'm like, damn, you know, it's a trip. And, you know, going into the school, some of those kids, you know, I tell them who I am. I say, my name is Focus. And just watch those eyes get big. And they're like, damn, you know, and they're talking to themselves. And I hear words like legend and stuff like that. And I'm like, nah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm just like y'all. You know, I grew up here. You know, I, I've been in these schools like this. I've been in the at-risk schools just like these. It's like there's nothing else here that would be you know, indifferent. You know, but that's that's a that's a very big thing for me is is that I want to continue to 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 share that with people. So that's the next thing that I'm that I'm going to try to attempt. Oh, I just. There's just another, just some more um, affirmation um, from Shane on Facebook who said, Wopi La for all you do, Kola. Uh, I needed to hear what you said today. I appreciate your encouragements, your realness, and your work leading with a strong heart. Wopi La Tonka. Hmm. So um, I don't see any more questions um, either on Facebook or here in, in Zoom. Um, so if you have any final thoughts, but I just want to thank you very much, Focus. I really appreciate you pulling your, editing down your, your huge library of photos of all your work um, and sharing what you could hear. And I encourage people to, to look you up on, on Instagram and um, keep an eye on what you're working on and, and just stay tuned for the next big thing. But thank you very much. And yeah, if you want to close out with any final thoughts wanted to say you know thank you to everybody and you know thank you to race magpie for this opportunity um, again to continue that personal disclaimer that what i say and that what i've shared here is, is my own thoughts you know and i say that to continue to ask for for peace for those people who don't um, need to have that uh, misplaced anger and hate put upon them you know i've, I've learned enough for myself that you know, I, I carry myself and so what I've said and, and how I have said it, you know, I stand by it. But, you know, again, thank you for the opportunity and thank you for uh, everybody that came and thank you for your time.